Hello and welcome to lecture 4 in equilibrium chemistry. Today we're going to look at the auto-ionization of water. Of course, these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. They form the basis for the bulk of the diploma exam questions that you'll see. Hopefully you're referring back to this page from time to time to get a sense of how your progress is coming. Pure water is a poor conductor of electricity. But the real question is, given that it's a molecular compound with no charged particles in solution, how does it conduct electricity at all? Well, its conductivity arises from the fact that water molecules spontaneously ionize at very low levels in pure water. And this is, a, in fact, a system in equilibrium. As a general rule, the greater the degree of ionization or dissociation of a species, the stronger the electrolyte. So this low level of ionization in water gives it the ability to conduct electricity to at very low levels. The system is known as the auto-ionization of water, and it looks like this. So two water molecules are in equilibrium with a hydronium ion and a hydroxide ion. As in any system in equilibrium, of course, we can write a Kc value for the system that reflects the relative concentrations of reactants and products. Of course, we don't include liquids in the Kc expression, so it looks like this. Kc equals hydronium ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration. This is sort of a special equation. We apply it a lot. So we give us a special designation Kw. And we state that here. The value for the Kw at SATP is 1.00 times 10 to the minus 14. And we could derive this to determine the concentration of both hydronium ion concentrations and hydroxide ion concentrations in pure water SATP. Kw equals hydronium ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration. 1.00 times 10 to the minus 14 equals x squared. Therefore, hydronium ion concentration equals 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter, as does hydroxide ion concentration. So pure water has equal concentrations of acid and base. And this means that SATP, since they're equal, um, it gives rise to both a neutral pH and water's ability to conduct electricity, however poorly. Of greater importance is the fact that this expression holds true for all dilute aqueous solutions. Kw is a constant. It equals 1.00 times 10 to the minus 14 for all of these solutions. So we can solve concentration and pH problems with this equation. Calculate the hydronium ion, sorry, calculate the hydroxide ion concentration in limes, which have a hydronium ion concentration of 1.3 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per liter. So here's our equation. We rearrange for the unknown, the hydroxide ion concentration, and we substitute in the Kw and the hydronium ion concentration, and we get a concentration of hydroxide of 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 13 moles per liter. Calculate the hydronium ion concentration in lemons, which have hydroxide ion concentration of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 12 moles per liter. Start with our equation, rearrange it for hydronium ion concentration, and substitute in both the Kw and the hydroxide ion concentration. We get a concentration of hydronium of 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. A little different question. Sodium hydroxide solution is prepared by dissolving 2.50 grams to make 2.00 liters of solution. I calculate hydroxide and hydronium ion concentrations. The first step then is to determine the moles per liter concentration of sodium hydroxide. We take its mass, we multiply by a mole over its molar mass to convert that into moles, and then multiply by one over its volume to, to determine a molar concentration. In this case, 0 0.03125 moles per liter. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. A strong base is by definition ionize completely in water. So the sodium hydroxide disappears completely and the final concentration of the hydroxide ion will equal the initial concentration of the sodium hydroxide. In this case, 0 0.03125 moles per liter. And that concept holds true not only for strong bases, but also for strong acids. Put a strong acid into solution and by definition, it, uh, it, dis it ionizes completely so that the final concentration of hydronium ions in a strong acid will equal the initial concentration of the molecular acid. So we're going to see this concept a lot. Coming back to the sodium hydroxide, though, we now have the hydroxide ion concentration. We have to solve for hydronium. 
Of course, hydronium equals Kw over hydroxide, and we substitute in, and we get a hydronium ion concentration of 3.20 times 10 to the minus 13 moles per liter. Um, equally important in this analysis is the pH scale, which we use to establish the relative strengths of acids and bases. The scale is set relative to the concentration of hydronium ions in pure water at SHEP. And here's the formula. pH is the negative log of hydronium ion concentration. Of course, we know what the hydronium ion concentration is in pure water at SATP, 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per liter. So we substitute that into our equation, and we get a pH value of 7.000. The asterisk is important. pH scale is an exponential scale, so by agreement, any digit to the left of the decimal is thought to be not significant. In this case, the 7 is not significant, so this is a pH value reported to three significant digits, just like the concentration of hydronium is reported. And that's what the asterisk refers to. Um, there are several equations that go together. Hopefully you remember them from grade 11. Hopefully you looked at them in grade 11 that help us analyze acidity of aqueous solutions. This is the pH equation, the pOH equation, the sum of the pH and pOH equation, concentration of hydronium and concentration of hydroxide. And now we're adding the, the KW equation to this system. Hopefully you're familiar with it. Typically the questions are tables such as this, where I've given you hydronium and working across the row, you have to solve for hydroxide, for pH, for pOH, and then tell me if it's an acid base or it's neutral. In the second row, I've given you hydroxide concentration. You have to so solve for hydronium, pH, pOH, and acid base neutral. Take a minute and these are your answers. Not all acids are alike. Strong acids ionize in water completely. They quantitatively ionize uh, into ions from their molecular form in solution. So the molecular acid almost completely disappears. And here's an example. This is aqueous hydrogen chloride, also known as hydrochloric acid, in water. Greater than 99.9% .9 of it converts to hydronium ions and chloride ions. There is an equilibrium, but it greatly favors products. On the other hand, weak acids only dissociate to a limited degree. Ethanoic acid is one such acid. At uh, SATP, just about 1.3% of it ionizes, which means that 98.7% of it remains in molecular form. And we see that here. Much less than 50% remains or converts into the hydronium ion and the acetate ion. The bulk of it remains as acetic acid or ethanoic acid in water. A strong acid dissoci dissociates quantitatively, and we just saw that in the previous page. In this course, by definition, there are six strong acids. And they're listed in your data booklet in the table of relative strengths of acid and bases. They include hydrochloric, nitric, sulfuric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, and perchloric. A weak acid dissociates to a lesser degree, and in point of fact, that's by definition. Weak acids are much weaker electrolytes. And there's a broad range of weaker acids, many of which are set out in your data booklet. Weaker acids also tend to react slower because they're, uh, in point of fact, weaker. For strong acids, we can assume that the concentration of hydronium in equilibrium equals the initial concentration of the acid. And we saw that previously when we looked at the sodium hydroxide question, dealing with a, a strong base. For weaker acids, though, we have to calculate the concentration of hydronium ions at equilibrium using a KC expression for the system or using a percent ionization value. So we'll look at a couple of percent ionization uh, questions today, and we'll push the consideration of KC calculations for weaker acids into my next lecture. So you got a 1.0, sorry, 0.10 moles per liter solution of acetic acid. It ionizes to 1.3%. Calculate hydronium ion concentration and the pH. So the concentration of hydronium is going to equal the initial concentration of the acetic acid times its percent ionization. Here's the equation, and we substitute in, and we get a value of hydronium ion concentration at 0 0.00130 moles per liter. Of course, the pH is the negative log of hydronium ion concentration. 
the negative log of 0 0.00130 moles per liter. The pH is 2.89, reported to two significant digits. And if you look at the question, uh, it calls for two significant digits. The pH of a 0 0.10 mole per liter solution of methanoic acid is 2.38. Calculate the percent reaction for the ionization. The pH is 2.38. Hydronium concentration then is 10 to the negative pH. 10 to the negative 2.38. 4.16 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. Percent reaction equals that hydronium ion concentration divided by the initial concentration of the acid times 100. Hopefully this is a formula you recall from grade 11. If not, uh, perhaps seek out some practice questions from your teacher. We substitute in the concentrations and uh, multiply by 100, and we get a value of 4.17, which is the percent reaction for the ionization of the methanoic acid. And that's reported to two significant digits, which is what the question calls for. That uh, concludes my lecture. I'll refer you to any homework your teacher might give you. Hopefully you found that of some value, and we'll see you next time when we talk about the um, Bronsted-Lowry acid-based systems. Thank you very much.